All righty then. We, um, we discussed a big subject last week with the prodigal son story. <clears throat> and it related to finding out that the real sin of the prodigal son was not what he did after he got the inheritance, but that he asked for the inheritance while the father was still alive. In other words, without, without death. He wanted his inheritance without death. And um, so um, uh, we, we discussed how that was according to Deuteronomy 21, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> that, um, that the firstborn would get a double portion and there was only one other son, so the younger one would get one third and the elder would get two thirds. So that means that when the prodigal son said, give me the portion, I mean, it's pretty plain when you hear it like that, you know, give me the portion that falleth to me, that is mine. So he took, so he took off <clears throat> uh, with one third of the father's living, and it uses that word, those words, the father's living. And um, there was the thought that maybe the father would need that, that he obviously wasn't going to need it after he died, but maybe he would need that. Maybe that would be important to his business. And who knows who took, you know, what portion he took that might have been very important, you know. <clears throat> so, um, so I just want to read and sort of finish off what we were talking about last week uh, on this. <clears throat> the younger son did not qualify for any inheritance until there had been a death. But he wanted it without a death. He wanted it without a death. He wanted the inheritance without a death. Now, I'll, I'll just be frank with you. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of churches that are talking about the inheritance. We've got the inheritance. And they read stuff like that. And they really don't understand the, the process or whatever. And um, they're just rejoicing that somehow they're, you know, we're joint heirs with Jesus, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus. <clears throat> and so, um, so in their hearts without a death, there always has to be a death to gain the things of God. Okay. Now, that's obvious since it all came through the cross, <laughs> right? I mean, it all came through the cross. Even the resurrection came through the cross because there's no resurrection without a death, yeah. You can't be resurrected unless there's a death. And so even our resurrection came through death. Uh, so also I wrote, the problem was that the prodigal did not realize that the death, the death that would happen would be his own. So I'm going to read to you Luke 15, 22 through 24 so you can see it. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Verse 24, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to make merry. So there's your death. It wasn't the father. The father didn't die. But the son started getting it, I'm going to tell you what, it sounds to me like he started getting what belonged to the firstborn, the best, the best, the best. Um, now, again, we're still on the bridge here, heading. When we get to that other side, <clears throat> we're going to discover some really powerful truths in relation to what I just said. Some really, uh, not just truths, but we're going to discover some 
powerful things that are in the heart of the Father, okay? So, uh, and let's just say it like this. I mean, if we're, if we're ignorant of the heart of the Father, um, then we may just wander around sort of like the prodigal son did. I mean, he, you know, I mean, he, he looked like he had a plan, didn't he? But that plan didn't last very long, you know. And it went well because he was financially fit. One third of the father's living, my Lord, you know. Uh, so everything looked good. <clears throat> but then he began to just wander. He just wandered. He didn't have a direction. And so the direction did what? It It led downward. And it led downward and downward and downward. If you read the if you read the scripture there, it'll give you layers. It'll give you layers of that downward movement. Until he ends up working for a foreigner in a foreign country and has found the pinnacle of the foreign country, the hog pen. <laughs> you know, and not only that, but it sounds like he would fain ha eat, have eaten of the husks that the hogs were eating. In other words, he's down to hog food, okay? So <clears throat> that's, I mean, this may be a simplified way of putting it, but I think it's pretty accurate according to at least the story that we have, the prodigal son. He arrived there strictly because he didn't understand the heart of the father. I mean, I mean that. Bless you. Much past two, and I just give, wave you off. <laughs> um... All right, so let's take a quick trip back in our minds about finding the heart of the Father. He didn't get it simply by living with the Father because he did live with the Father before he took off. He didn't get it just simply by being in the family as if osmosis. Osmosis only works in one form, and that's oneness. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. <clears throat> but, you know, like anything, if you're pouring something out, you have to empty something if it's got other stuff in it. You know, you, you do. You, you know, you can't have a, you know, a cup of tea and you've been drinking on it and so it's half full and then you go, hey, I want some coffee and somebody's got some coffee, you know, pour me some. It's like, okay, well... At worst, there's no room, so you don't get any. And almost as bad, <clears throat> you get coffee tea, which to Jim Allen would be nightmare coffee. <laughs> nightmare coffee. <clears throat> so the process then, how, you know, uh, how? Did both sons miss this? How did it happen? You know? And someone will say, well, because um, he was a bad father. Well, there's no inkling of that. Apparently, apparently the blame sort of goes to both of the sons, right? <clears throat> but we would say that. We would say, well, he just wasn't a good father. I mean, David had trouble with his kids, right? Well, that's the reason why is he just wasn't a good father. Okay, well, I don't know about that. Um, some of you have heard this story. It's not a story. It was something that I experienced. But when I was in Bible school, we were standing in the lunch line, and there was tons of people in the lunchroom, in uh, the Bible school lunchroom, and you, you, it was all set up like a regular lunchroom. You get a tray, and you're going down, and you're getting this and that. And, and two guys in front of me... Um, we're talking about the kid in front of them who was the leader's son. And they said, 
uh, they were sort of whispering to one another and said, I wonder what horrible thing the leader, they call him by name, did to end up with a wild son like that that has no interest in the Lord at all. And I, I leaned over and I said, well, let's see. Let's look at what we're like. And then are we going to blame our Heavenly Father for us? You know, I really didn't, you know, wait around for their response. Or What I mean is I didn't want to hear it, really. All I know is that the Father is pure. He does all things based on love. But that doesn't mean everything works out rosy for us. It works out better if we understand his heart. You know, for example, and we'll, we'll talk about this some, but for example, you know, the father let him go. He let him go. Okay, well, we'll address that here eventually. But some, someone would say, well, he's not a very good father. He should have just grabbed him up. He said, no, I ain't giving you that. It's not right. It's not timing, this and that. But the Father did it. And we, we have the ability to see through things and to judge. We can see what's good or what's evil. Because we ate at the wrong tree. You know, <clears throat> and, and the scripture warns in several different places, don't call evil good and good evil. Well, you know, you look at the cross and you're one of, you, you know, you're one of the people who helped get him hung up there and you're going, this is good. On your part, buddy, this is evil. <laughs> On God's part, it's good. See, and, you know, it's just, it's, there's just, um, a place where the sons have to come out of their selves, their view. And I know, I know the prodigal. I mean, I, it's almost like I know him personally. <laughs> but but I, I, I know that, he, you know, he's just, I just want my wings. I just want to explore. I just want to find out. I want to learn to stand on my own two feet. You know, and a, and a Christian saying that is really dumb because we are his feet. <laughs> you know, we're the body. We are his hands. We are his heart. We are his, we're one with that. We are one with that. And if, and if I was a member that was a finger and you're a member that is, a, I'll just say it like this, a brain, then can the finger say to the brain, why am I not? Well, wait a minute. It's all Jesus. And it's all him and how the brain or any other member ministers or administrates might be a better word, their office or their calling, whether good or evil, whether right or wrong, whether ultimately doesn't matter. It's still that we're one with Jesus. Still, that we're one with Jesus. <clears throat> All right, so, for this my son was dead and is alive again. And so here's the death. He asked for the inheritance before the father died. He took the father's goods and left. But a death eventually came, but not to the father, to that son. But when the death came, that's when the best started coming. We go, I don't want to die. I remember going through the process. I mean, it's in a serious way, okay? I don't mean a new creation. I'm just joking. But in a serious way of, of going, oh, my God, I've got to die. I'm, I'm supposed to die. And the word says it. You know, I checked it out, and I really looked, and it really is saying this. And I'm going, oh, my God, and it's not just one place. It's a bunch of places, and I've got to die. And I don't, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to die. You know, I, I kind of like myself, you know. And I don't want to lose my personality, which, trust me, it was hard for me to lose my personality. 
You don't lose your personality. He made you the way that he likes you, and that's his business. But I definitely went through it. I mean, I was really going through it, and then <clears throat> and was wrestling. Well, at first I was fighting. <laughs> you know, the, you get weaker as you go. <laughs> you know, I was wrestling, I was fighting, and then I started wrestling, and then I'm going, eh, you know, whining, and all of the process that that leads to. And I remember the day, I remember when God began to reveal that I died with Christ and it was as clear as clear could be that I'm already dead. I'm already dead. And so I, like water baptism, I laid back into it, into the arms of Jesus, into the hands of my father. I laid back into it and went under and was shocked that I got pulled up. I'd forgot about the resurrection. I'd forgot about it. I really, I really thought, you know, it was just going to be a life of never getting to do anything fun and never da da da, da all this stuff. And it's just, but I'm going to do it for you, Jesus. And he's going, Thanks a bunch. You're the rock of Gibraltar, buddy. <laughs> All right. So um, the, the reality of death for the prodigal son, the reality that this my son was dead and is now alive, the reality of that is you were already dead but now you're alive. The reality is that he was in the hog pen. He was, as we said, in a foreign country, in a uh, uh, serving, not just serving, joined to a foreigner, a, 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 I don't know, a pagan, a, a Gentile, I, you know, how do you say that to Gentiles? They, they, they would go, <gasps> You know, you know, that's a tough one. They were, he was joined to y'all. <laughs> Instead of going, oh, my God, you're going, well, that ain't so bad. <laughs> but, but, they, but then came this surge of reality, looking into the father's face, feeling the ring shoved on his hand and looking at it, the best robe put on him, the shoes, the, you know, all of that was happening. And it was a declaration that you are alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're not alive unto God because you're a Christian. Right. You are alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see any, anybody see a reason to flee from Babylon and be joined to him? Yeah. Flee from the hog pen. Flee from the, the, the hog farmer. You know, I'm blessed at this side over here, but you people need to get it together. Because <laughs> I haven't got one amen off of this side over here. <laughs> so there is that. There is that moment, and the moment recognizes what? I was dead, but I'm alive. Greater than that. I was dead. He's the resurrection. He is the resurrection and the life. And that's what the father's seeing is the son, not the prodigal son. The son. He's, he wanted that son, and he looked like he wasn't going to get him at all, and both sons were going opposite of what was in his heart, which we'll talk about next go round. And yet, there it is. There it is. So usually what we do is we see, we see the response of the prodigal son, and we see the, oh my God, and we see the, the just a change of everything right there for him. But the father, he's the one who wants to make Mary. He's like, yeah, yeah, I can see the old Jewish guy. Yeah. 
you know. <laughs> Come on, let's go, let's go in, let's kill the fatted calf and look at the parts and, and realize what this means, and then we're going to eat it. And he's, the son's going, yeah, Dad. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. What a story. What a simple story that just screams the reality of Christ as our life. Amen. All right. Well, we ran out of what are those papers? With, we ran out of papers with numbers. So let's stop and we'll come back here in a few minutes.